oh, I thought for a second there, I thought something happened. Sorry about that. Uh, back to our show. Uh, we want to thank our sponsor for February, which is Wealth Stack, a uh, number one way to build your wealth. And as far as my guest, I'm going to go ahead and bring him on now. Uh, Steve Kinney is the uh, guest that we're going to have today. Steve served seven years in the Navy Reserves as an in-flight technician on P-3 Orion aircraft. He has a software engineer for, he, he was a software engineer for six years and then a process consultant on the software he built for another seven years, helping Fortune 500 companies optimize their processes. He started Search Optimizers to offer a turnkey high-end SEO service at a price that small companies can afford. Let's hear all about their upcoming 25th anniversary in March and more. And without further ado, I want to bring on my good friend, Steve Kinney. Hi, Shelly. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. Sorry about that, because I thought that all of a sudden there was an interruption in the network. So welcome. And uh, we're happy that you're here. And I want to thank you for your service and, you know, let you know how honored we are that you serve. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. And Steve, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? And then I would love to hear uh, what you enjoyed most about being in the Navy. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just a process person at heart. I I, I feel like my, my first uh, role in, in the Navy as an in-flight technician was all about process. Very quickly, we had to learn the rigor of you know, learning all the systems on the aircraft, what to do in emergencies, and in my specific role, uh, how to fix something when it goes wrong. Sometimes we'd be out on 12 hour missions, and as long as everything was working fine, I didn't have anything to do. I could support other people on the mission, but yeah. as soon as something went wrong, everyone was looking at me. And as a young guy, when I started doing that, you know, with guys that were sometimes twice my age, you know, yeah. that can be a lot of pressure, but I felt like what I learned in the Navy, as far as the rigor of how to learn this stuff, and to mm -hmm. stay like up to speed with it all, um, that has carried through into my business life. And I just feel blessed to have had that experience and to get to yeah. use it now in business. Oh, definitely. And you know, when you look back at your, your career in the military, what is one of the stories that really was kind of resonated uh, just throughout your life? Mm. Yeah, good question. Um, you know, I think it was, uh, I'll say it was a turning point. When I first got in, mm -hmm. I was a technician on the aircraft on the ground, and there was a small percentage of my rating that got selected to fly. And uh, it, it took uh, month after month, you know, a couple of years of working really hard, of learning, uh, you know, the, not only the role that I was in, but the role that I wanted to be in. What did those guys need? What did the office that was doing them, what did they need to be successful? And I felt like yeah. as I showed that I was looking just beyond my role into the bigger mission of our squadron, that's what got me the visibility that eventually got me selected. Mm -hmm. And so I think that same thing transfers into business. When you're looking at a client, mm -hmm. It's not just looking at them from the perspective of how they might use your product or service, but looking at the bigger picture and what are their needs, what are their pain points and what are their opportunities and how to help them more holistically than just what you happen to offer. Yeah. And I know that you mentioned that your experience in the military really helped you to launch your company. And what do you think was kind of the the leading force behind, you know, starting search optimizers? And I know you're, you know, you you're celebrating your 25th year, correct, in business in March? Next month. Yeah. Next month will be yeah. 25 years, which in one wow. sense makes me feel old. Um, <laughs> um, what a milestone, though. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's amazing. And it's an mm -hmm. amazing team that we have. You know, it's not something I can really take credit for. Uh, you know, just I'm part of a great team. Uh, and you know what, for me, uh, for my business, when I was prior to this, when I was uh, consulting for the Fortune, a uh, lot Fortune 100 companies even, um, Mm -hmm. I decided my passion wasn't for helping those larger companies. I felt like a lot of large companies can, I'll say, lose their way and maybe not provide the best work environment for their employees, maybe even lose their way as far as what's best for clients. For me, I feel small businesses are the heart of our country. When you've got a good small business, 
I mean, it's you have the opportunity to treat every employee one on one, figure out what they want in life more than just what they want in the job and serve them even beyond the job. And so my passion yeah. is to help really good small companies compete and win against larger companies. Yes. And, and I love that. I, I know that we were talking a little bit in the green room earlier and we were talking about, you know, for you with, you know, working with veterans and helping them in business, you know, you, you have a real passion for that. So let's talk about that a little bit as far as, you know, helping entrepreneurs get started. I know uh, you have a network of, of people that we're both part of, and, yes. you know, I know that you've helped a number of them, including me. So let's talk about that a little bit. So, you know, what it starts with uh, uh, is someone when everybody when someone starts a business, there's a primary purpose for their life on the personal side. Why are they doing it? Why are they leaving a larger job where may, maybe it feels a little more secure? They can just do their job. They don't have to worry about the other parts of the puzzle. And usually when you look at it, it's it's a couple of things. It's one, they have a passion to do mm -hmm. something that they're not able to do in that larger business. And the second part is on the personal side, you know, yeah. being able to have the control of my life as I run the business has been a game changer for me. My daughter, for mm -hmm. instance, um, I, I, you can never get that time back when they're young. And yeah. uh, so I unfortunately, <laughs> I unfortunately was divorced when my daughter was three, but I made it a point to put her at the center of everything. So any yeah. day that she wanted me to come have lunch with her at school, I took that time and I was able to do it. Every field trip from from preschool up till sixth grade, with the exception of one, oh, wow. I was able to be on because she wanted me to be there. And so it yeah. gives me the flexibility to do that. And so, I, you know, for me, I want to find out why is a business owner doing that and then help them figure out how to allow the business to be a tool for them rather than just run their lives. And so that's kind of where my focus is from a coaching perspective. Yeah, I, I, you know, that is so awesome that, you know, when your daughter was little and you were there for all the time, you were team dad, right? When you would go yeah. on those field trips. Yeah, I was considered <laughs> Mr. Awesome. Mom. The moms would call me Mr. Mr. Mom, Mom and, you know, they'd be having their mom talks and they would integrate me in. And I felt like one of the one of the moms there. Yeah, well, and, and this kind of segues into the next question that I'm going to ask you that, that I, I like to ask uh, some of the guests that we have on the show. So as a child, what did you want to be when you got older and tell us why i wanted to be a fighter pilot i wanted to be a navy oh. fighter pilot ever since i was uh very small and i remember uh you know my parents friends would ask me you know how you ask a kid what do you want to be when they grow up and i said a fighter pilot and they would kind of laugh and chuckle and say well my son wanted to be a this or that or the other and now he's a you know something else right yeah. and i'm like no i i seriously do and that's why i actually joined the, the the navy reserves when i was a junior in high school i went to boot camp after my junior mm -hmm. year and my whole goal was to fly to get experience so that i could get the best possible application when it came time to filing to to become a fighter pilot um and unfortunately for me, you know, the time I graduated, the Cold War was over. Mm -hmm. The Navy mm -hmm. wasn't accepting anybody. The Air Force wasn't accepting anybody, but the Air National Guard was. And so I actually mm -hmm. put in for a, a pilot slot and I got selected, believe it or not. So oh, I was starting to live my dream. I went mm -hmm. to my first weed out flight school. I went to commissioning school. And then I had three months off between that and my jet school and their budget got mm -hmm. cut. So mm -hmm. it wasn't in the cards for me to be a a fighter pilot, as I hoped, but fortunate for me, I had a technical degree. And so I, at that point, I, I moved on from active duty to, to, uh, to my career. And it's been uh, wonderful ever since. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. And I know, you know, the people that you work with, I mean, they're very grateful for how you help them navigate, you know, in business. How do you feel when you're helping businesses, you know, that, that you've helped, let's say in the last year, especially during a pandemic, how do you feel when when you know that you've you know definitely kind of made progress with them and and how does that feel for you i i feel like i'm living my purpose i feel like we all have a purpose and i feel like as as president of my company i have a purpose for the employees that i have to build you know to help coach them and mentor them but then when i'm coaching other business owners it allows me to spend more time in my purpose there's only so much time mm -hmm. that my company needs me coaching you know each of the key employees that i have but then when i get mm -hmm. to coach other business owners i feel like i'm living my purpose i'm supposed to be there and uh so i, I feel like the time goes by quickly i i wish i could do more of it i never I never, I always look forward to coaching sessions. So that's mm -hmm. when I know I'm kind of in my purpose. 
Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a great feeling when you're living your purpose. Absolutely. <laughs> and Steve, what life lesson have you learned that had a big impact on your life? Mm. You know, I think it was the disappointment that came with when I tried everything I could. I had a, an ama a really good package for for uh for for becoming a fighter pilot my afoqt scores for those of you that that tried to have, have gone on to become air force pilots will know what that is i was in the 99th percentile i studied that inside out left and right and i got to a point where i thought man i have done everything i possibly could and the disappointment was great at that time i'll, I'll, I'll admit that mm -hmm. but when i realized that wasn't you know where i was supposed to be and when i turned the corner and moved on from identifying myself only as a as a military fighter pilot and saw myself as well there's something else that life has for me i think that's allowed me to accept things i mean even this pandemic yeah. i mean my business has gotten hit really hard in that and we've had to go through a lot in two years these these two mm -hmm. years have been the, probably the toughest of the last 25 but mm -hmm. i i don't fight it anymore and you kind of accept what's there and now go okay now what what are the opportunities within this change that I didn't expect. And so I would say that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's, and, and I know with the pandemic, you know, that that's good to hear that, you know, you've kind of gone beyond that. And now it's, you know, something that's much easier to cope with. And I think things are gonna, you know, get a little bit better, hopefully within the next few months. And, you know, knowing that you're celebrating for your 25th um, year in business, what are the plans for the celebration? You know, at this point, it's I think, you know, we've got this momentum of we've made a whole bunch of changes to where we are just seeing the fruits of all that work that we've done. I'd say it's to keep doing what we're doing. I think we're um, yeah. we're probably going to get our team together. Our team's distributed. We've got some in uh, in Madison, Wisconsin. We've got some here in Southern California. We're going to get everybody together and have a little celebration. But, you know, we're going to redouble our efforts for what is our purpose as a company. And it's serving these small business owners. How can we help them grow? So mm -hmm. it's in some ways a little celebration, but in some ways it's just a, hey, this is, you know, this is who we are and let's keep doing what we're doing. Yes, absolutely. And I'm going to check real quick because I know we have some people that are making comments in, in the, uh, we've got uh, hands up, hands up from Sharon, uh, Tony Finch. Thank you, Sharon. And I know that uh, pretty soon we're we're actually gonna have um, another another guest that's going to be coming on. But back to Steve. So Steve, as far as you know, the words of wisdom that you can give a business owner right now, uh, what do you feel would be really relevant for you know thinking of businesses and and maybe those businesses that are really struggling and still haven't been able to you know get past some of the the you know things and obstacles that they've been dealing with with you know, the pandemic and just, you know, the businesses that are on the verge of closing. Yeah. You know what? I really think it starts with really understanding your clients, you know, having that call business owner to business owner with your clients or business owner, to whoever your, your end client is and learning about them, asking them questions of where are you at right now? You know, sometimes we can make assumptions for us. We're in serious recovery mode and things are going great, but I don't want to assume that for the next business. When you kind of check in and go, how are you doing? Not just your business, how are you doing? And when you, I feel like when you have a, a finger on the pulse mm -hmm. of how people are doing, not just businesses, you begin to discover things. You'll begin to discover, well, man, I thought they wanted this from us right now, but they actually need this right here. And also there's this component of you care, you care about me, right? Mm -hmm. A product and service is just a product or service. But when you know that the people behind that product and service care about you, there's a trust that builds. And so I think that authentic mm -hmm. trust comes from individual relationships and just spend a little extra time, understand where they're at. And then when they're being vulnerable with you, open up and be vulnerable with them. You know, the idea that we always have to look like everything's great that's not authentic and people can sense that, but even more important, people can't relate to that. So that's, I'd say that's what I'd recommend. Oh yeah. And we just had another message come through. Uh, and this is, um, in fact, let's see, let me read that real quick. So, and, and you could see it there from Eric, uh, terrific thoughts. Steve, I look forward to using some of your perspective in my business. So that that's great news because I think, you know, the way that you work with clients, I know, let, let's talk about a little bit about the types of, of clients, the industries and, and where you feel is your sweet spot with what you do. 
Yeah, well, with the search optimizer side of things, um, you know, uh, we are, I've built this service not to be a service for the larger companies. I think there's plenty of providers out there. I think as far as high-end search engine optimization service, it's the smaller companies that really mm -hmm. need this, that don't have the opportunity to get what I call a high-end search engine optimization service. So I tend to say, yeah. you know, 50 million and below in revenue is a sweet spot for us. And so we're priced to be able to serve that and understand that. And as far as industries, mm -hmm. You know, uh, it really is across industries. Uh, not that SEO makes sense for every business, but part of our mm -hmm. pre-sales process is to do an, a competitive assessment. And yes. in about 20, 25 minutes, we're gonna learn like, how are you targeting the market? What are the problems that your product or service solves? And then who are your top competitors? We're gonna go do research. We're gonna come back with all the data. And this is pre-sales before they spend a dime. And that mm -hmm. data is either gonna tell us SEO is not the right fit for you, but here's a bunch of information that's going to help you in your lead generation efforts. Or it's like, wow, this is really telling. There is really some 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 potential here and the data to show it. So that's that's yeah. that's really where we start. Yeah. And I know the actually a couple of years ago, in fact, I was it was before the pandemic and I had that assessment done through your company. And that was such a telling experience. And I think, you know, for uh, for people out there that don't really know what SEO is or maybe they're not really sure. Can you give us a little overview of what SEO is and, and why it's important for, you know, for businesses, even small companies? Absolutely. Well, first is what is the problem that it solves? And it solves the lead generation problem. So most businesses, and, and when I'm even on the coaching side, that's the other thing I do is help coach businesses, business owners to get their company to the next level. One of the things I'll assess is, okay, what is your uh, key form of lead generation? Lead generation is someone that discovered you that didn't even know your product or service existed. Then once you once you do lead generation, then lead nurturing is the next stage. A lot of companies are pretty good at lead nurturing, but a lot of them don't have a scalable, cost-effective form of lead generation. But well, SEO mm -hmm. solves that problem. The way yeah. I would describe it, it's like the yellow pages of, of old, right? So back in the day, you ask, a, say, a plumber in Irvine, California, you know, how do they get their leads? A lot of them were from the yellow pages because when someone goes and opens up yeah, the Irvine yellow pages and search for plumber, <laughs> And they call you, they're looking for you, right? Yeah. Well, obviously today that's a, that's an anachronism, but when they open the search engine and they search for an Irvine plumber or what have you, they're saying, you, I'm looking for you right now and you mm -hmm. want to be there when they're searching for you. And that's what search engine optimization does. Yeah. And, and doesn't it include social media too? So, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, I mean, that has to tie into it somehow leading business, you know, or search uh you know potential leads to your your website yes exactly so those are other forms of lead generation so with linkedin mm -hmm. you know people that are connected to you by being able to provide them information of value to them such as videos like this that's a way yeah. for them to learn from you and when they learn from you they're like hey i want to get to know you and maybe we could do business together or social media is a way it's both lead generation and lead nurturing it's a way mm -hmm. to get feedback from your community of Hey, you know what? What are you looking for? What do you need? What do you like about us? What can we improve? And when you uh, really try to learn and, and, and try to improve your process from that, people see that and they go, wow, that's someone I want to do business with because they're not just looking to sell me something. They're looking mm -hmm. for the long term relationship and serving me. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, it would also include like the YouTube channel. And I know a lot of people that are on Instagram and, you know, a lot of that would feed into that SEO, too. And now does your company when when you work with companies, do you work with them, you know, just on a short term basis, long term basis? What what yeah. is the process? Good question. Yeah. So we always say SEO is a forever service, meaning if you work really hard and it takes some time to get to cost effective, when you mm -hmm. work really hard and start to get the search engine credibility required in order to get the rankings, if you were to stop, you would watch that whittle away. And it's kind of like the yellow pages of old. If this was 1978, you said to someone, hey, are you in the yellow pages? I said, oh, we already did that back in 1974 and they didn't keep doing it well, it wouldn't have much value. Same thing yeah. with search engine optimization. You're either getting better, like over time, the more you do, you should get more phrases ranked high for better results. If you stop doing it and the competitors keep doing it, you're going to watch your results go down. So it's what I call That's a forever cool. service. Mm-hmm. 
No, and and it's important, just like you said, for a business to constantly keep that in motion. Um, right now, uh, I want to just let our audience know we are here with the president of Search Optimization. This is Steve Kinney with us. And we've just talked about SEO. We've talked about his military experience. And we want to thank you, Steve, for being on the show. I know that we are either going to have a tour with Michael Wood, and I'm trying to see from the backstage if, let's see, uh, let's see. I'm thinking that Michael Woods is here. So we are going to go to uh, a tour with Michael Wood. And uh, Steve, again, we wanna thank you for being with us today. And I hope you enjoyed the show. We enjoyed having you and all of yeah. your, just thank you for sharing all of your expertise. Thank Definitely. you, Shelley. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, we will go to our next segment. <laughs> and here we go. All right. And welcome back. And I'm wanting to see if we have, let's see. He is here. There we go. Hi. How are you doing, Michael? Great to see you. <laughs> Great to see you too, Shelly. Thank you yeah. for having me on today. Oh, well, we're so happy that you're here. Uh, we want to let our audience know that this is Michael Wood. And I haven't seen Michael in a, in a few uh, months. I know that uh, you've been busy. Tell us what you have. You've, you've got a new studio. You're doing your grand opening today. Let's hear about it, Michael. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, been quite interesting uh, with the amount of uh, live events and uh, that we've uh, and virtual conferences that we've been doing. But uh, today, what's really special is that we've got a brand new uh, podcast studio uh, with the within our center. So we've got a couple. Of, we got a sound stage. We got a TV stage. But with yeah. this space, is what really cool about it is that you know, the different angles, the multi multi views that you could uh, shoot in this environment. So we've got the yeah. nice wood, we've got the white uh, abstract behind us. You almost got about six or different uh, scenes in here that you could set up for podcasting, for, Very um, nice. for YouTube yeah. videos and stuff like that. But what's really cool is that it's also got an engineer room. You know, it's got a green room, hair and makeup. But uh, mm -hmm. let's switch over. Shelly, if you're ready, I could give you a behind the scenes look. Would you like that? We would love to see that. Yes. All right. So let's go ahead and switch over. So. All right. So now you should be able to see my laptop, right? We can see your laptop. All right. Ah. So I don't see your screen right now, but uh, you could see the different uh, cameras in the control room. Is that correct? Yeah, we sure can. We can see it all. So very nice. As you, because yeah. we have an open house right now, we've got people chit chatting in there. But um, as you can see, so the different angles, we've got the uh, artwork that's on the wall. So you could have that in your background. Yeah. You could have wood just wood, different light, everything's pre-lit. You can change mm -hmm. the lighting depending on your uh, brand colors. Very um, versatile. Very versatile. Yeah. And then uh, I know uh, I'm gonna step out here so you can see the green room um, and some of the, uh, but uh, I'll, because the mic's in here, I'll, it'll get a little quiet, but uh, just real quick. So here's the uh, engineer room and everybody say hi. Hello. And Hello. Then, uh, <laughs> here is our green room. Uh, Very everybody nice. say hi. Yeah. Hello. Y'all are live on Facebook and LinkedIn. Yeah. <laughs> so right behind you, Jaya. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah. So I'm yeah. I'm pretty excited about it. It's uh, it's nice to be in this environment, you know, and having yes. a, a great space for it. So. That's a beautiful studio. And, you know, I know what your role there, Michael, tell us about your role and what you do there at the studio. So I do a lot of uh, virtual productions, live uh, commercials, um, 
<laughs> live commercials, uh, <laughs> live conferences, uh, uh -huh. corporate communications and stuff like that. But we also do brand videos, uh, commercials for smaller, uh, uh, smaller brands, you know, product placements, training videos and short documentaries. Yeah. Oh, that, that is so awesome. And how long did it take for this, you know, for the new design of the studio? How long did that take? Um, we, we were, we were hoping to have it done in December, but, uh, you know, like anything, you know, with planning things become, you know, uh, it, you have snags in the process, yeah. but, uh, we, I mean, there's still a little thing there's, there's paint drying from, uh, two days oh. ago, the door, you know, <laughs> so this is right. like, this is brand new space. Uh, it's, it's one of the spaces in the studio that we like to come into is like, this is we would rather be in here, you know, because it's so nice, but uh, yeah. it's, it's very versatile. That was the intent of this is our other spaces, um, the sound stage, you, we could fit a car, Winnebago in there. It's perfect for the larger sets, but you uh -huh. still have to build it. In here, you can come in, turn on the camera and uh, do your live interview. So Just kind, it's kind of plug and play, right? Yeah. And then yeah. if you need to scale and have an engineer you know, have different uh, uh, requirements, multi cameras, then you can start adding those on, you know, and the space facilitates that. So you could have the producer in a completely different room, like, ah, what are you doing? Get the talent <laughs> to smile at the camera. So I'm smiling. Oh, how fun so. though. And yeah, and as far as your location, uh, would you like to give your location so that people know where to find you if they're looking to start their own podcast show or they're you know planning a conference, virtual conference, What, where are you located? So we're, we are in uh, Vista, California. So it's a uh, North County, San Diego. Uh, what's really great about this location for both San Diego and LA is that one, we have parking, two, um, that the, uh, studio is, a it's an easy access to multiple, uh, both, uh, cities. So yeah. if your company or your business is, you know, corporate headquarters, or even if you have clients that have to fly in and you want to do mm -hmm. an interview, this location is perfect for it. Um, so you yeah. could definitely find us online at neverforgottenmedia.com. Um, find me on LinkedIn, you know, you could definitely reach out and, one of the great things is that I'll sit down with you and chit chat about what you really need, you know? So yeah. if you like, kind Hey, I need, a, I need a flashy right? video for my website. Okay. Why mm -hmm. do you have an audience? You know, what do you want to do with it? Um, well, let's hold off on that flashy video. Let's like start building your audience on LinkedIn or Facebook. Yeah. Let's look, let's build up your visual content. So then that way you have an audience for your, your flashy video right. on your website in the future. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I wasn't able to go on the actual in-person tour. So I'm excited that you brought us for a tour and our audience. That was so cool. And we want to thank you too, Michael. We, you know, you were producing this show along with Jimmy uh, for a long time. And we just really want to give you you know, a, a big shout out because we appreciate where you, you know, where you started with us and here we are and you, you know, helped us along the way and we appreciate that and your service. Um, but uh, it's great to see you and uh, thank you for the virtual tour. We're coming to the end of our show and we want to thank our audience for joining us today and uh, give a shout out to our uh, sponsor for February, which is Wealthstack. And I know that uh, actually we had the owner, Andrew, on a couple of weeks ago. I had the honor of interviewing him. So feel free to go back to that interview and you could see all about Wealthstack. Um, and again, thank you so much for being here with us today. We want to thank Steve Kinney uh, for being with us. He was my first guest. And uh, it was great to see you, Michael. And everybody have a wonderful weekend. And thank you to our audience for tuning in. I just have uh, one Fridays. And I know we have the, the, the actual, the people in, in uh, Michael's studio there. Uh, but we want to thank you for being here and, and join us uh, on Fridays when we have our shows and subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right. Thanks again, everyone, and have a wonderful weekend. Thanks, Shelly. Thank you.